स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे क्लास इन लास्ट फ्यू क्लासेस वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर एंड हाउ वी कैन सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम थ्रू क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स टू रिकॉल वी हैव रिटर्न डाउन द हेमिल्टोनियन ऑफ द हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर प्रॉब्लम द हेमिल्टोनियन हर ए काइनेटिक एनर्जी टर्म एंड ए पोटेंशियल एनर्जी टर्म the kinetic energy term is given by the operator p square by 2m and the potential energy term is given by the operator half k x square term so here p is the momentum operator and x is the position operator we also discuss that instead of using the linear momentum and the position operator we can express these two operators in terms of two new operators that we call step up or step down operators and we can express this hamiltonian as h bar omega a plus which is step up operator a minus which is step down operator plus half so this is the new form of the hamiltonian operator that we had been dealing with if you remember we called this a plus a minus operator as a new operator called operator n and we try to solve the eigen value problem corresponding to this operator while doing so we defined that let phi n be an eigen function of this operator n with an eigen value of small n so this is what we had defined since n is a hamiltonian operator this n was going to is going to be a real value real eigen value other thing that we should remember is that looking at this hamiltonian operator which is sum of p square and x square operators if you remember p is a hermitian operator therefore its eigen values are real it can be positive or negative but they have to be real but p square's eigen values have to be real and positive similarly x is also a hermitian operator and its eigen values are going to be real whether positive or negative but however x square operators eigen values are going to be real and positive so therefore the eigen values of this hamiltonian operator for harmonic oscillator are going to be real and positive because this this operator is sum of square of two hermitian operators so therefore the eigen values are going to be real and positive given that we have defined our hamiltonian as in terms of this n operator and then we would see what would we get if we evaluate this particular expression since hamiltonian operator h is defined in terms of operator n as n plus half so therefore i can rewrite this expression and i have this h bar omega i'm bringing it out of this integration so when you see this operator n when it acts on phi n we have defined that this phi n is an eigen function of operator n so therefore the result of this ex exercise would give us n plus half h bar by omega so this is the expectation value of this hamiltonian operator now this hamiltonian operator's eigen values are going to be real and positive so therefore we can see we can say n plus half is going to be greater than or equal to 0 so therefore n is going to be greater than or equal to minus half so when we started defining our eigen functions of this operator n we just said that let n be an eigen value we did not know anything about n but now we see that this value n cannot be smaller than minus 0.5 it has to be greater than or equal to minus 0.5 mind you we still do not know what are the values of n or what is the lowest possible value of n but at least from this exercise we get to know that there is there is going to be a lower limit for for the value of n if 
you remember our we defined our eigen function as phi n with an eigen value of n. We also suggested if you remember the discussion of uh, from the last class how what the step up and step down operators do. So, we said that if I apply my step down operator on phi n I will generate phi n minus 1 function. If I gen apply step down operator one, min one more time I am going to get phi n minus 2. If I start applying step up operator instead of step down operator on phi n I am going to get phi n plus 1. So, this is the action of op step up operator and this is the action of step down operator. So, step down operator brings me down the eigenvalue spectrum, step up operator takes me up the eigenvalue spectrum. Now, since phi n are the eigenfunctions of the Hermitian operator n, so therefore they are going to form a complete set. I so far I did not know where what are these whether there was any upper limit or lower limit to this n, but now thanks to this exercise I now know that there exists a lower limit of n. Now, if there exists a lower limit of n below which the uh, eigen function should not exist that means, suppose I have I want to find out what is the lowest possible eigen function. I call that phi minimum that is the lowest function. Now, if I have this lowest function phi minimum and I apply the step down operator on it. So, I have this phi minimum which is the lowest eigen function of operator n and I apply my step down operator on this function. What would I do? What would I get? See step down operators job is to take the eigen function and take uh, give you back the eigen function just below it. But now since we have defined phi minimum is the lowest eigen function, since it is lowest eigen function there exists no other eigen function below it. So, therefore, this exercise should give me 0. This is what we discussed, uh, this is what we have learnt from, from, from this exercise. Now, suppose this, so therefore, the, if this is the lowest allowed Eigen function action of a minus will give me 0. Now, what is the Eigen value? So, this phi minimum is the lowest Eigen function of operator n. If this is the lowest Eigen function the question that we are asking is that what is the Eigen value corresponding to it. So, if you remember n we have defined just here a plus a minus operator the step up step down operator and then we are applying phi minimum here. Now, when you look my a minus operator when it acts on phi minimum what do I get? Since phi minimum is the lowest Eigen function step down operator should give me 0, because there exists no other function Eigen function below phi minimum. So, therefore, this a minus operation on phi minimum gives me 0. So, therefore, the outcome is 0, which I can rewrite as 0 multiplied by phi minimum. What advantage do I get by writing in this way? So, if you look at the left hand side and right hand side you see that left hand side shows operation of operator n on phi minimum and the right hand side shows that I, I am getting back my function, I function with a constant 0. So, that means phi minimum is an Eigen function of operator n with Eigen value of 0. So, does this satisfy the other limit? The limit that we have found from this exercise is that the n value of n should be greater than minus 0 0.5. It could have been minus 0 0.4, it could have been minus 0 0.3 or any other number real number above minus 0 0.5. But this exercise over here tells me that the minimum value of n, the minimum Eigen value n is going to be 0. So, therefore, phi minimum I can write as phi 0. So, the lowest value of lowest possible value of n is going to be 0. Now, this is the Eigen lowest Eigen function of this 
operator n. But remember, we are interested in the operator Hamil Hamiltonian operator. Hamiltonian operator is re closely related to this n operator. So, now we have seen that the lowest function, lowest eigenfunction of n operator is pi 0, but now the question is what would I get the what would I get when I apply this Hamiltonian on this lowest eigen function? This we will look up next. So, H is Hamiltonian operator is defined as n plus half into H bar omega and we saw that phi 0 is the lowest eigenfunction of operator n with this relation. So, if I apply this phi 0, uh, if I apply the Hamiltonian operator on phi 0, what would I get? So, the Hamiltonian operator is given like this and application of phi 0. So, when n acts on phi 0, I get 0 and then if you do this little exercise, you would get. Now, what do I see? I see that phi 0 the lowest eigenfunction of operator n and since this is the only operator that is defined in Hamiltonian. So, this is also the lowest eigenfunction of this Hamiltonian uh, operator. So, the lowest eigenfunction of this Hamiltonian operator corresponds to a an energy value of half h bar omega. So, this is since phi 0 is the lowest eigenfunction that means, the corresponding eigenvalue is the lowest possible energy of a harmonic oscillator and this value is also known as 0 point energy. This is known as 0 point energy that this is the minimum value minimum energy value of a harmonic oscillator. All right. Now, we know the lowest eigenvalue what about the other eigenvalues? Because we know that this Hamiltonian operator is a Hermitian operator and it is going to have a complete set of eigenfunctions and we would be interested in knowing the eigenvalues of the other eigenfunctions. To do that, we will I will remind you of a little exercise that we did in uh, some earlier class. We saw we, 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 we saw we discussed that if phi n is an eigenfunction of operator n with an eigenvalue of small n, we, all, we have already shown that that we say that if phi n is an eigenfunction of operator n with an eigenvalue of small n, then a plus phi n that means, step up operator acting on phi n this is the eigenfunction step up operator acting on that eigenfunction is also an eigenfunction of this operator n uh, with an eigenvalue n plus 1. So, we would re remember this uh, expression and use this relation to calculate other eigen uh, either other eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian operator. Okay. So, suppose let us say uh, I am starting with n equals 0. So, when I do this I would actually write down n a plus phi 0 is since n is 0 over here. So, I am getting 1 into a plus phi 0, but I know this a plus phi 0 is proportional to phi 1, phi 1 is the next eigenfunction. So, n phi 1 is 1 phi 1. Similarly, if I apply n equals 1 in this ex expression, I get operator n acting on a plus phi 1 gives me n is 1. So, here I get 2 a plus phi 1, but I also know that this a plus phi 1 is proportional to phi 2. So, therefore, I can write down that n phi 2 is 2 phi 2. Similarly, I can show for all other for phi values and I come to this general understanding where n phi n is n uh, the operator 
n acting on phi n gives me eigenvalue of n, but now I know something more about these eigenvalues. What do I know? The eigenvalues that I am going to, I am getting are 0, this is where I got when n is 0, when n is 1 I am getting eigenvalue is 1, 2. So, now I see that the eigenvalues of this n operator are nothing but integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. So, this is quite a surprising result because we see here a Hermitian operator which corresponds to a physical observable has eigenvalues that have that have that are dependent on the integers the numbers that we use to count. So, this is the uh, beauty of uh, quantum mechanics that we are seeing. So, now we obtain the eigenvalues of n operator we will just rephrase this and discuss the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian operator. So, Hamiltonian operator is, is given like this and if I have h acting on phi n which is essentially h bar omega n plus half acting on phi n. So, operator n acting on phi n gives me small n phi n plus half acting on phi n gives me this. So, now I see that h operator the Hamiltonian operator when it acts on these eigenfunctions phi n I am getting these eigenvalues which are h bar omega into n plus half where n is 0, 1, 2 so on so forth. So, if n is 0 that is the lowest eigenvalue n is 0 what is the energy that is E 0 the 0 point energy is simply h bar omega divided by 2 when I apply n is 0. So, 0 plus half is half h bar omega by 2. So, when n is 1 I get the next energy level and that is E 1 if you see this n is 1. So, 1 plus half 3 half. So, I am getting 3 half h bar omega. Similarly, when I get n, n is 2 the energy E 2 is 5 half h bar omega and so on. So, so now how, what I am getting is that the energy levels of this harmonic eigenvalues of this harmonic oscillator problem where the energy levels are given by these quantities and if you already notice the spacing between two consecutive energy levels of harmonic oscillator are, are constant. So, they are all h bar omega. Please remember or refresh your memory as to what was the spacing between two consecutive energy levels of particle in a one dimensional box problem. The lowest energy of this harmonic oscillator that we see as I have already mentioned. So, this is called 0 point energy. So, we have now obtained an understanding about the eigenvalues of the harmonic oscillator problem. Now, next what we do is that we will discuss the Eigen functions of harmonic oscillator. So, we have defined our Eigen functions as phi n, but still we do not know actually what are the functional form of phi n. But what we have already known one important quantity uh, one important information is that the lowest Eigen function is my phi 0. This is the lowest Eigen function. Now, if, if this is my lowest Eigen function if I apply a minus operator on this lowest Eigen function I am going to get a 0 this much I know, but I still do not know what is phi 0 what is the functional form of phi 0 this is what we are going to do. If you remember we defined our a minus operator the step up oper step down operator as beta by root 2 x plus i p m omega phi 0. So, this is the definition of a minus operator that we had defined in terms of x and p the position and momentum operators. So, since beta by root 2 beta is a, is a constant uh, which is beta square is m omega by h bar. So, therefore, th uh, this is a constant for a uh, non zero constant for a uh, particular problem. So, I can uh, uh, ignore this term or take it to right side and then I have x plus 
i by m omega and p operator is so i have only one variable so i see i minus i that gives me plus 1 so i have x plus h bar m omega d by dx phi 0 is 0 this is here i just use the definition of uh, p operator momentum operator so i solve i am going to solve this equation and therefore uh, I take this and now I separate the phi 0 term on one side. So, I bring phi 0 to the uh, this side and x terms on the other side and what I am going to do is that you remember this m omega divided by h bar is, is a is a constant. So, I am going to integrate both sides and I have already done a few times this this kind of integration. Uh, so, th this the left hand side will give me ln phi 0 and if you remember this m omega divided by h bar was beta square and the integration of x dx would give me x square divided by 2 plus a constant of integration I am calling it ln a which is a where a is a constant. So, I can rewrite this phi 0 as a which is coming out of the constant of integration multiplied by e to the power minus b x square by 2. So, this is my low the functional form of the lowest eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator. So, remember how how we uh, come to this functional form in this case we actually did not derive all the eigenfunctions through one general expression, but what we are doing is that we are using this step concept of step up step down operator and try found out the lowest eigenfunction the functional form of the lowest eigenfunction by acting by using the definition of this step down operator and then we have this functional form. Now, what is this if you look at this this uh, form this is e to the power minus some constant x square uh, type of form and this form is called a Gaussian function e to the power minus some co constant multiplied by x square. So, this Gaussian function has a bell uh, shape this is x is 0 and this goes from minus infinity to, to plus infinity and this function has some uh, other interesting property is that this is this is an uh, even function that you can already see for example, uh, we define an a fun we define a function as even function where f of x is equal to f of minus x and if f of x is negative of f of minus x then this is an odd function if this equality holds then this is an even function. So, this Gaussian function is, is an even function be, because this is symmetric uh, with respect to this uh, uh, 0 uh, axis. So, what we obtain now is the functional form of this wave fun Eigen function, but what we do not know is the this constant a how do we get this since we have only one const unknown here a and we if you remember a necessary condition for to have a well behaved function is that it should be normalizable. So, this function we have to normalize and once we normalize this function we will be able to obtain what is the value of a and this is what we would uh, try to do next. So, we would normalize the lowest eigen function. So, if phi 0 is a e to the power minus beta square x square divided by 2 to normalize this function. So, I have to have phi 0 star phi 0 d x 
where it goes from minus infinite to plus infinite should be equal to 1. Now, phi 0 is, is the function you have phi 0 star is its complex conjugate. So, since this is, but this is a real function there is no imaginary root. So, phi 0 star is essentially phi 0. So, I write like this a square this is a constant I am bringing it out e to the power minus beta square x square d x. So, this is how do I get beta square x square because there is divided by 2 in each term. So, phi 0 and phi 0 star will have this half e to the power minus beta x square divided by 2. So, when I multiply them I get e to the power minus beta square x square d x. Now, I have to integrate this function, but before that I rewrite. So, this I am going to uh, integrate this function. I, I already have discussed that this is a Gaussian function which is an even function and is symmetric with, res, uh, with, uh, with respect to the 0 uh, axis. So, therefore, what I would do is that instead of using this minus infinity to plus infinity limit, I will change the limit to 0 to infinity because if a function is symmetric then its integration or the area under that curve is going to be same when I integrate from 0 to plus infinity or 0 to minus infinity. So, therefore, instead of in integrating it from minus infinity to plus infinity, I am going to use this called uh, rewrite this in this way where now the reason behind bringing my form to bringing the integral to this form is that now I, I, I would go, I am going to use this particular expression to find out what is the value of a. So, I have a square 2 and the, the result of this integration is going to be if I here this is the form of the function x to the power 2 n e to the power minus a x square. So, here n is 0 because we have no term uh, with respect to x. So, this is n is 0 e to the power minus a x square where a is simply uh, beta square. So, when I apply this I would be getting the result. So, this term will become 1 over 2 and this term will be pi divided by beta square. This quantity is going to be 1. So, I solve this because why is this going to be 1? Because I am trying to normalize this function. So, I have a, therefore, I have a square into pi divided by beta square under square root is 1. So, therefore, a So, this is my normalization constant and the final Eigen function the normalized form of the Eigen function if I have to write down this would be So, now finally, we came to a point where we have some idea about what is the functional form of this. Uh, lowest Eigen function of this uh, of the harmonic oscillator problem. So, in today's class just to remind you we discussed the Eigen values of the harmonic oscillator problem. We also discussed the functional form of the lowest Eigen function of this uh, harmonic oscillator problem and also we normalized this function uh, lowest Eigen function. In next class we will continue our discussion on the other Eigen functions of harmonic oscillator problem. Thank you for your attention.